Hi, I'm Shamel, and I'm here for the Paige Evans Cut File Design Team today. And today I'm going to be making a mixed media page with this tropical fish border and some photos from Epcot. So here's my tropical fish border that I've cut from white cardstock and I want to start with a background that I can add some splashes of watercolor to, um, but I don't want a plain white background. Now you could certainly use a plain white background for this, but I prefer backgrounds that have a bit of pattern or texture to them. So I've pulled out a few different papers from pages, different collections that would be really good candidates for this sort of background. So I've got a ledger. This one has kind of little cross stitch marks and some pastel lettering, little curly cue, like an old phone cable really. And this one's a geometric with diamonds, lines and crosses. So they're all different designs that are on a white or a cream background and, and they're, they're small patterns, uh, subtle patterns, uh, this is being the boldest one of the five, but they're all things that I could add a bunch of paint to so that you didn't see part of the pattern of the part of the 12 by 12 and it would still make sense. So that's what I'm looking for. Something that doesn't have a huge amount of color in the background already because I'm going to put color on the top and if there's a lot of color there already it's going to get all muddled and mixed and might not work. And I want something that isn't, um, isn't going to disappear because I've covered up part of it with paint. Yeah? Um, so my photos are under here. Let's have a look and choose what um, pictures, or what which paper would look best with those pictures. And I'm going to be pulling from the colors of the fish um, to fit in with my fish border. So I'm going to have blues and yellows and orange, a little bit of black and white. So keeping that in mind, and um, actually this one works quite well with Cassie's hat here. And it's, I mean, it's a cream neutral. I think I'm going to try that. So to prepare my paper, I'm going to add a layer of clear gesso because I'm going to be adding a whole bunch of wet stuff to a piece of paper and it's not watercolor paper. So it's going to have a, a certain amount of, of wet that it can hold. And by adding a layer of gesso, that gives me a little bit more grounding, a little bit more stability to work with. It's not going to be infinite, you know, it's still going to bubble a little bit or warp the paper a little bit, um, but it's going to be a lot easier to work with wet media on top of a pattern paper. That's, that's as simple as, as it is. And because I work on different colored papers, I use clear gesso rather than white because it's not always just a plain white background for me. And um, so that's Liquitex uh, clear gesso, but it comes in lots of different brands. Just use what you have available. So simple, shake it up. Pour some on, brush it up. Do not overthink. <laughs> now I'm mostly going to be working, I think around here, that's my feeling. So I want to make sure that this section of the page is covered. Now you can just cover the whole 12 by 12, or you can stick to a certain area that you want to work in. And you'll see even as I apply this, that you do get a little bit of warp to the background. It's not going to be a huge problem, and once it's in the page protector, it's absolutely fine. If you get bothered by the warped paper, you can always press it out, and you can press it out at different stages. You don't have to wait until the whole layout's done, and then try and press it out where you've got pop dots and things, and it's going to get smushed. Um, smushed being a very technical term, you understand. Um, but instead, you could do the color on the background... And before you add anything else to it, you could press it out then. And by pressing it out, I just mean stick it under some heavy books for, for a day or two. No problem. So if you really enjoy making backgrounds like this, then you could have a whole day of just doing the process of, oh, I'll have all these gessoed, and then I'll add lots of color, and I'll let them, let them sit. And then you come back to them. That, that totally works. Now while that dries, that's when I do the backing of my cut file. So I'm going to turn these fish that are a little outline into some colorful fish. So I've pulled out scraps and full sheets just depending on what colors I needed. So I've got blues in dark blue. I've got some black and white stripes that I thought could work for a clown fish. Um, it's from this paper that has 
big flower on it. And this one's got quite a few different colors, so I thought I could use different sections. And I've got some orange, of course, because can't have clownfish without orange. Um, got some yellow in dots and stripes and this lovely watercolor blue as well. So I'm going to piece together my fish and it should be nice and colorful and tropical. all cut out and my gesso is all dry on my background so time to figure out how I want to color all this in well I need a pencil and what I want to do is mark where they're going to go so I'm going to pop my photo my photos are going to go over to this side somewhere so I just want to make sure there's enough room for them so that's about right so I'm about a third of the way in from the right and I want to match the color of the fish with the color of the paint. So I'm just kind of marking out where they fall, just with little pencil dots, that's it. Then I take these away so they do not get painted. Then I've got a mat to mix up some watercolor and I've got some water and I've got a brush and I've got some watercolor paint and I've also got some liquid white acrylic and that's this this one is by De La Rowney but they come in all different versions and you can use various different white acrylic paints watered down but this one comes as a nice thin liquid more the consistency of ink Okay, so that first fish up at the top is an orange fish. So I want some orange paint. And I'm going to load that up onto my mat here. Just normal watercolor palette. This will work with any watercolors. And if you don't have watercolors, but you have lots of ink pads, most, well, a lot of ink pads will also work for this. Okay, so I've got quite a bit of pigment there, and now I want quite a bit of water to water it down. And I've got a bit of brush hair in there, don't need that. That's still looking quite dark. And I'm going to add some white to it. Now, it won't show up quite that uh, quite that dark on here anyway, but I'm going to add just a little drop of white. One that's just fun to watch, <laughs> but then <laughs> mix it up. Yeah. Okay, and then I'm going to go back to my big brush here. Load that up, it's quite a wet brush. Remember where my top orange fish is. And then I'm just gonna come in and lay the brush down like that. So I'm making kind of puddles at the moment. Remember, it's not watercolor paper, it's pattern paper, but I've put some gesso on it so it's going to have a little bit more potential with the water. Whereas if I put this straight onto the the pattern paper without the gesso, then um, it would have all soaked in very quickly. I wouldn't have this puddle left that's kind of pliable. Yeah. So then I can add a little bit of a darker bit of pigment here and there by just going straight back to my paint palette and bringing it in here. Now, I like to go ahead and soak up the extra, and I just do that with a tiny flannel. Just, it's like a miniature face cloth. <laughs> and there, I have what's left. Yes, then I can repeat this process a few times. It's 
smush it all together. And again, and this time what's left will be brighter. Yeah, let's get in that second color because I want some blue as well and then some yellow too. I'm not done with my orange, so I'm not going to take that off my, my palette just yet. But instead, I'm going to make up a spot of blue. Okay, so I'm going to add the, the white again, just a single drop. See if I like this color once it has its white pigment added. Bigger brush is a little more clean this time. Okay. There we go. Now, same sort of technique. I don't want to run them all together, so I'm gonna leave a little gap so that I don't get mud. I want the orange to stay orange and the blue to stay blue. layer one. Soak up the extra. Pick it up. So the first time it's very pale, yeah? We had that with the orange too. Now come back in. Just another layer of the color over the top. And then I'm going to pick up the pigment straight from the palette, like I did with the orange, and then tap the brush in. Just into those little spots that are quite saturated. time with the blue. Now if you get a bit that you really love the color, you can always just let it air dry or use your heat tool rather than soak it up like I do. But I'm quite impatient. <laughs> so I do this layers and soaking it up. But the heat tool works really well. Different, different technique for a different day, but both work nicely. I'm going to get my brush almost dry and tap in the tiniest little bit left. And then while I'm working on the next bit, I'm going to let that color exist there and soak in a bit. Okay, let's get the blue out of my brush. I'm going to go back to that orange that I already have mixed up. And I'm going to repeat that down here. Again, trying not to make mud. So I've got a little separation between the colors. One thing I want to do before this is all finished is to add in little touches of yellow because the fish have little touches of yellow. So I'm going to mix up one third color here on my palette. And that's a yellow. And this one is going to come in around the edges. Try not to mix it too much because I don't want mud. I'm getting mud here. There we go. Okay, that probably will be enough. And then, time to dry it all up. So the yellow 
is going to be way more subtle. Not loving this bit, but that may, well, it will lighten up a little bit as it dries. Add a bit more yellow pigment into a couple of these areas here. Because that first coat does the kind of priming and second coat you get a bit more color. I want the color. <laughs> It'll look a bit of a mess at this point and that's okay. <laughs> and because you're gonna put stuff over the top. I'm not creating a background that's meant to be a foreground. I, I am putting stuff in the background because I have every intention of throwing stuff on top of it, namely fish. And it's going to be fine. Now I'm going to, while I've got the paint on the palette, I'm going to add some little flicks of that color right over the top. And see how where the colors come together Having those little flicks is going to be a little more concentrated and with the flick than what I've taken over the top. So even the little dots of blue on top of the blue look really lovely. It gives a bit of, a, of depth to it. And same with some orange. that my flicks go over the join of the colors. A bit like how we overlap paper. We want it to go on to different layers. Well, I want the same thing with my colors of paint. I don't really want it to be color blocked in that I have all the orange here and all the yellow there. I want this little bit of overlap. So I'm gonna have some orange dots that go over the top of the blue there and into the yellow up here. Out with the orange, in with the yellow. Last little step I'm going to add to this is just some of that same white straight to the background. And then I'm going to build my photos and paper all on top of that. Okay, so let that dry while I build the embellishment. So I've got my fish and I've got these two photos, which are gonna go in that order, this order. Hmm. Yeah, let's go that direction. So, have a look at colors that I've used and have enough of. So I used this other blue, but I don't have quite enough of that one. So I'm going to use this one and map these two photos. And looking at that, actually, I want some white around the edge to have more contrast. I'm just going to take the white that's the rest of this, and I'm going to put this layer on first. two right next to each other and then the blue around the outside of this just give it that little bit brightness to have the white around the edge and not get lost out 
out a few die cuts and a whole bunch of sticker sheets and I'm going to work on this left hand side. I'm looking for things that are blue, yellow, or orange and then seeing if there's a way for them to work. So I have this tag, love the design of this but want to put something in the center because I want the outside but, um, but the center doesn't really tell uh, doesn't add anything to my story. So I'm going to find things that can sit in the center there and add to the feeling that I want to remember. So this isn't a romantic forever and always kind of moment, but it is, however, a fun moment. So I'm going to pop this right up there at the top and see how that fits in the same width. Then I can look for other elements in the same sorts of colors. Um, I do have a yellow chicken, but I think I'll give the chicken a miss this time. Okay, let's see what we've got. Blues, yellows, here's a blue and yellow item, so that can go in somewhere. Um, And this one might, no, I don't know. Okay. Just reading the text on the tiny ones in case any of those are a really good fit. And what about this yellow and orange here? Okay, let's see if that might fit in this space here. And then I'm going to take the train section away from this and just use the ticket section. This to the front like that. And then I can bring that chipboard camera in here. Still want those words to be legible. I can bring that in there. But I've got a lot of boxes here, so bringing in something with a different shape is helpful, and that's what this is. So that can fit up here. And I can start to see how that will all fit together. Time to get this background back in the foreground. Now, when I come to putting things back together, I need to work from this left-hand edge so that I don't run out of space. So I've made all of this that I want to go over to the left. So I'm going to need to figure out where that can fit. And you know, if I had swapped these photos, I'd have more room here. So I don't really want to cover this, but I don't mind covering that. So guess what I'm going to do? Swap them around. Up, this one goes to the top, and that gives me more flexibility with where I can layer things up. Perfect. So then this can set in here because anything that's getting missed there is visible here, and I'm not covering up the people, I'm, I'm, I'm not even covering up much of the fish theme, so we are all good. So adhesive on that and this. Let's find a way to make this work. So this can come into about there. And then I don't mind if this goes off the edge, but I don't want to lose the wording. So if it were to be there, do I have enough room for my fish? Yes, I do. Okay. So this is all going to go down here. Now, sometimes, oh, oh, oh. Sometimes, once you've put gesso and paint over the top, things won't want to stick. You may need different kinds of adhesive, but that's okay. Then my fish are going to come in here. Right about there. Oh, yep. Yeah. See, it's, it's moving a bit. 
Now I know I wanted to find a Nemo reference. The title seems like it should be Just Keep Swimming, but this isn't a layout about anything that's complicated or takes lots of perseverance. Instead, it's a one of those I just want to remember this day. So I'm going to go on a more, um, on a different sort of story kick and go with I don't want to forget because I, I, we put remember on plenty of scrapbooking pages but in Dory's case she doesn't want to forget so instead of doing just keep swimming that's what I'm going to go with and instead of using these alphas which I love and I use a lot and I still think they would work really well I'm going to use the blue ones because for some reason I haven't been using them and they're just as fabulous. Oh, wrong, wrong word. Okay. This little tag has a little space for date and location. And then this background has that geometric pattern with the lines. So I could use that for my journaling and run it right down that right hand margin. And now, just time for finishing touches. Well, one, I want to trim this, Let's turn it over, Oops. and go all my die cuts. Take this right off the edge. And let's have some little elements to sprinkle around. So I think I've got a pack of enamel dots here, and Got some little heart stickers and some dots that might work as bubbles actually. Let's start with these puppy circles because I like the idea of them seeming like little fish bubbles. Bubbles in the water. Yes? Yeah. Let's see if I can bring in a few on this side too. The big orange one. So I'll bring that same sort of idea over here and bring it up there. Here's those enamel shapes. These are from Go the Scenic Route and they're gorgeous. They're so sparkly. This is the longest I have ever rationed out a pack of enamel dots. I love them. Okay, so where can I add in maybe a little one here? Maybe I can make that into a little trio in this, just right in the middle of that area of embellishment, not even trying to keep it to the outside. Put it right into the middle. Like that, maybe it needs to come down here. There. And then, do I want one little sparkly one with with these little bubbles. This set of bubbles is perfect. These are too far apart. <laughs> Don't look as bubbly. Bring in this one e even further up. That's better. I like that better. Okay. Maybe I put one heart shape up here with the title. Oh, that's pink though. <laughs> yeah, on any other page I would say yes, but I feel like it doesn't doesn't work with the elements that are there. So I'm gonna leave that out. Maybe I have a little sticker somewhere. Just a quick look. Oh, I can see some hearts. Okay, hold on. What about this heart instead? A lighter blue with the title. That's the one. And that's it. That's where I'm going to stop. So this is the Tropical Fish Border from Paige Evans and you can get it on Etsy or the Silhouette Store. But you can use that same technique with any different border um, cut file because it, you could use the same composition and these could be hearts, these could be stars, it could be you know any other shape. 
and you wouldn't necessarily need to use these with Nemo if you've been to an aquarium trip and you have some sort of aquarium photos or um, any anything else that is fish activity. <laughs> have you done home learning about fish <laughs> and you've got, um, it, do you have a fish tank at home? All these sorts of things could go with that um, particular cut file that you could use the same technique and swap this out for different shapes. If you go to Paige's store, you can even just search in the search bar for borders and it'll show you all the different shape designs she has that are in a line rather than a whole page or one big shape and that can be really helpful sometimes. Now if a page comes out like this and this is giving you anxiety that it's coming up because it's not flat. Two things. Number one, you can put it in a page protector it's going to have another layout on the other side that will straighten it out a great deal. Two, if it's still not flat enough for your liking Put another, just put a plain sheet of cardstock over the top and put a book on top of it. Leave it there for a little while, come back. Then put it in your page protector and in your album and you'll be good to go. Okay, thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you soon. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. I would love to see you back again for another page soon. Bye-bye.